Okay. So I've got a nice cup of tea for my morning painting. And um, well, if you like, you can go grab some too. Checking to see if I've got everything to paint. Um, today I intend to be to do the live um, for about an hour, um, whether it's finished or not. Because um, yesterday um, I didn't really, <laughs> I wasn't aware how I did a live, and I wasn't aware how much time um, I spent doing the live, and it was quite a bit of time. So, gonna slightly just the lights a bit because they're pretty much in my face which makes it harder to paint so oops <laughs> sorry I bumped you <laughs> okay let me see if I can make a little adjustment yeah that's better okay so before I start painting, I'm going to do um, the little trick with water again. Um, these are just scrap papers, by the way, to try new colours on when I mix them. Um, this is um, a graphite drawing and um, before I start painting, I want to sort of fixate the graphite and the best way to do that when you're um, doing a watercolour is simply by um, laying down a layer of water over it. So carefully don't, don't, you don't want to smudge the graphite, so just soft strokes. And this also prepares the paper really well for, for taking the watercolour. So this is um, a moleskin, a, water, a moleskin watercolour journal. So it's pretty thin paper, but it takes the watercolour really well. I wonder what they do with this paper to, to make it so... To make it behave so well with watercolour. So I'm just letting it buckle for a bit. Um, the brush I would use now was a faux squirrel brush by Zen Art. They approached me well a long time ago, maybe a year ago, if I wanted to try some of their brushes. And um, I have, they're all very big. And um, it's synthetic, but I, I quite like them, um, especially for things like this. They hold quite a bit of water and they have a really nice um, tip for precision painting. So um, in the beginning, they were a bit big for the, the technique, the style I work in, because much of my work is very small. Um, so at first I didn't think I they were really going to be of much benefit to me. But they, they definitely are. I, keep, I use them more and more often these days. It's, it was something I needed to get used to that. I'm going to make a bit of noise. Um, this is a heat gun and I'm going to speed things up because if we have to wait, you know, all the time before the, before the paper dries, before we can go on, um, you're not going to see much of me painting in an hour or so. Here we go. Sorry for the noise.
Okay, so that's the first layer dried and um, I really do call it a layer by the way. <laughs> right, so um, I don't know if you were here yesterday when I was doing the live um, painting, um, but <clears throat> these creatures are based on an, um, a butterfly I saw in my garden last Saturday, uh, Sunday. Um, it's the angle shades. It's a, a moth that um, when it's just, you know, newly hatched, it's olive, it's um, kind of olive green um, with some pink, pinkish brown or brownish pink, whatever you want to call it. Um, but then as time, as they live longer, they get lighter. So they're not light fast, these butterflies, poor things. But anyway, I ran into one at the end of the season, so it was well, nearly white, um, and I found him um, when the sun was setting and um, there was this golden light everywhere and he was sitting on some seed and plants. So that's where I photographed him and I painted him later. I did that Monday. Then I wanted to do some spin-offs like paint, like draw creatures based on this, um, on this butterfly. So here was just, you know, two more or a couple more uh, sketches I did um, on the basis of some, well, I think Google search images that I um, used to, to see what the head was like. And then I started out with this creature um, that I painted for the live video yesterday. And um, after I painted that, um, I drew this one, um, this sketch. So this is the one I'm going to be painting today. And um, I have no idea what the hell it is. Okay, so this is just um, part of my 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 process, my play, basically a part of finding, um, you know, new shapes and everything. Um, what I want to do first um, before I um, paint the creature self is paint sort of a background. And um, what I oops. <laughs> A good thing you didn't see that but <laughs> that was a really athletic um an athletic um throw of my um what's it called what's this called in english does anyone know what this is called in english i have no idea by the way i am from the netherlands just so you know but uh no don't know what this is but anyway it's going to help me um draw a straight line what i like in this journal is um you know when i have these um clearly um drawn frames so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to draw a frame and for such lines that i don't want to smudge i use a 2h pencil it won't smudge at all. This is a really good one, by the way. It's Faber Castell 9000 2H. And this is um, the best um, 2H pencil I've ever had. It doesn't smudge at all. And it's really great with, you know, when you're doing watercolors. And I can still erase it. It doesn't really cut through the paper because when you have really hot pencils, sometimes it, they damage the paper. So. Let's see where we're going to get today. I'm going to start with my least favourite colour in my palette again, which is Chromium Oxide. Talked about that yesterday. Um, one of my YouTube viewers told me I should leave that in my set. Um, and I didn't really believe her because I, don't, I really dislike the colour. But I have to say, she was so right, um, because it really does, it tones down all the greens, which is really, really good. I'm going to be using, so chromium oxide, I've just mixed that with peachy seven, phthalo green, blue shade. And I'm going to also prepare a little bit of perylene green. Um, I've got the schminky horridan one. That's P B P B K, so it's a black pigment, 31. I don't know how long I'm going to keep up with naming the pigment numbers, by the way. I'll try, but... So 
So, and I'm only using a small brush. That's just the way I work in general. Some people keep telling me that I should take a bigger brush. I never do. <laughs> it's just a thing I'm used to, you know. Hmm. That colour doesn't really flow, does it? So what I did is I basically toned down the uh, phthalo green. This phthalo green is so, you know, like all phthalo colours, it's very, very in your face. And uh, I want it to be a background, so I want it to uh, I want it to be subdued, to withdraw, rather than be in your face. I don't know what brand um, brush I'm painting with now. Um, I think it's an Escoda. Escola, Escoda. Um, one of my viewers said that too yesterday, that it had to be an Escoda. Escoda, Escola. Um, I think so too. But there is no name. It's a travel brush and I really, really like it. And if you hear weird ticking noises, that's uh, the wind. We're having a stormy day today, which I absolutely love. Unlike most people, but. Where are you guys from? Yesterday, I, I was totally surprised to find that um, we were having um, a geo try. Hi, Vanessa. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you very much for looking that up for me. Is it really called a geo triangle? Is it? Who would have thought? It was. It's, it's always a thing. You think some things are difficult and then they're not right. Well, where are you guys from? Because um, I never anticipated to get any viewers at all on live recordings. Um, or not much anyway, because I thought, you know, um, I do live recordings more often. But then it's usually in the evening. So then there's a lot of people, a lot of my viewers from the United States. Um, so I hadn't expected that yesterday we had... At least one person from the US, one from Canada, one from Thailand, and a friend from the Netherlands stopped by. But I was so surprised that, you know, despite the hour, there were people from all over the world watching. Or maybe not, maybe listening, you know, maybe just put on the channel and then go do some chores or something. I sometimes do that too. Then I just listen to people. I want to keep this area wet because I'm going to be dropping in some more paint later. So I want to start light to, um, and the thing is too with watercolour is what 
people who start out with watercolour um, can sometimes be very confused about how to use it because they don't achieve the effects that um, more experienced watercolourists achieve. And the thing is that, um, especially when they're used to painting with other kinds of paint, um, what many people don't realise is that watercolour is definitely a medium that you need to think of in layers. Um, it takes a change of mindset to um, to realise that whatever you're doing now is going to look completely different in another few layers and you are going to apply those other few layers because you want to have depth of colour and as you layer, um, you know, the balance of your image changes all the time. So when you change one thing, you need to change the other thing. So in watercolour, you're constantly layering. And uh, I find that very interesting. Hi, Rebecca. You're sleepless in the USA, New Hampshire. Oh, sorry. You most, you most often see my recorded videos. Oh, thank you. I hope you like them. And I hope I can make your sleepless night, um, you know, a little bearable, a little bit more bearable. It's not fun, <clears throat> not fun to have sleepless night. <laughs> Yesterday, I had to um, a man who was, um, there was a man who was also very, very awake, very late. And eventually he left saying, oh, oh no, it's already, it was already past four, four at night for him. So I hope he didn't have to work to yesterday. Oh, no, say today, the next day, because, well. So I'm going to make the background totally vague and blurry. Because when you photograph something, a background would be vague and blurry, right? So I am a bit surprised that this paint just won't flow. And I'm blaming it on the chromium oxide. <laughs> All the paper. It's never my skills, of course, never my skills. The only thing I find hard with this brush is that the hair is so soft that I find it really hard, like here in the antenna, you can see that I did accidentally touch the um, antenna with the green paint. And I really, really tried not to. So this is why I prefer always to use um, synthetic brushes, because they offer way more control. There's something people don't like. Um, when people don't like watercolour, the thing they dislike about it most is that it offers them no control. And that's true. Watercolour is um, a medium I think you have to be able to, to give in to or to, oops, to surrender to in a way. Um, but you can still learn to do something to work without the control. So as you see, I keep adding a lot of water and that is, it's got everything to do with keeping things really blurry. <laughs> my soothing voice, oh God, I hope my voice is soothing then. <laughs> I'll try not to cough too much then too because um, don't know what it's like in the United States, but um, here after COVID, <clears throat> everybody is down with a cold or <clears throat> a flu-like cold at the moment. So I hope I won't have one of my coughing now. Because then I might wake you up again if you, if you drift off. <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment if you drift off. <laughs> okay, now I'm going in with the Perlin Green.
And basically, I'm just laying it down, lie, I'm laying it down, and um, I'm letting it do what it, as it will, you know, sort of um, going for the illusion of shrubs or, well, something green behind it or around it. Just like there was green on my, you know, my, the butterfly I photographed was sitting on sedum plants and um, they too are very blurry in the, in the image, um, but also in the photo. So I'm going for that blurry effect. Okay. <laughs> this kind of work I always prefer my other brushes for, but so much detail. Don't want to go over the lines. I already hate what happened to the antenna here, but anyway, we're going to fix that later on, I think. Although I did use Thalo Green, and Thalo Green is not very forgiving in, um, no, it's quite staining. Oops. Now, still going back in with more perylene green now, throwing in even darker spots to, to just let things happen. And then this is going to be the last bit of green I'm going to add to the background and then I'm going to move on to, um, you know, painting the creature. Because it will dry lighter, of course, than it looks now. So later on, I will have to get in again and um, so this is not the last thing I'll be doing. Um, this is not the last paint I'll be adding to the background. But here's where I think there is a good enough, um, it's good enough for space to work from um, with this creature. I like to have a little bit of background in order before I go on. Oops, oh God, no. Okay. 
these brushes hold so much more water than the uh, synthetic brushes. <laughs> if you're not careful, you'll have a lot of water at the same time on your, you know, on your paper at the same time. So nearly done with the first, well, would you call this a first layer? It isn't really, is it? There are more layers in this already, but I always call this a first layer before drying. Well, there are so many spots in this antenna that are And there is stale green in it, so I'm not really going to be able to to take it all out. Let's just give it a very hard push and go back in with a precision brush. Maybe that'll do the trick. Hopefully, yeah. Sort of does the trick. Not not perfectly, but well. It's a sketchbook page, right? So here I need to also The reason I went in with some extra dark paint here <laughs> Is because um, it may help me, you know, it may help me prevent the antenna from um, being contaminated with paint again. Oh, um, because when there is a lot of water in the paint, it will run into areas you don't want it to go much more easily. So, adding less water gives you more control over the paint. And then you do get a darker tone, of course, but that's not a problem here for me, I think. Um, do I have the patience to let it dry or do I use... Um, well, it depends, you know, sometimes it depends on the paper you use as well. There is paper that um, some watercolor paper doesn't like to be to have you know um, to be blow dried because then the fibers will um, become a bit um, annoyed. I would like to say, and the paper just doesn't behave as good anymore afterwards. So it depends on the paper, um, and it also depends on. You know, like now I'm doing a live, so now I will definitely use, um, I will definitely dry the um, the paper in between layers, or else you wouldn't get to see much of me painting. Um, but it can have an effect on the paint on the layers afterwards. It can indeed. Um, so, yeah. It's something you have to try. Depends greatly on the paper that you use. And I've also noticed that sometimes certain papers take it well and sometimes it doesn't.
Okay. Right. So this is going to be the background. And um, what's also very important, you, you probably know this. So maybe this is, you know, an unnecessary remark, but um, you can use a hairdryer and the hairdryer is less warm. Um, but it um, it's so there's a lot of air in the output, so it's really windy. And when there is wet areas on your paper, you might get, you know, um, drops of paint running across your page. So um, another way to dry is with um, a heat gun. And but the danger of a heat gun is that it gets really, really warm, much warmer than a hairdryer. But there is less um, water uh, air coming out. So it's easier for, um, you know, to prevent um, drops of water running across your page. But you have to be really careful not to burn your paper. That depends very much on your paper. But sometimes, you know, when I'm not paying much attention, sometimes smoke just <laughs> curls up from my page. So that's something you have to be careful with because you're not just because you might set your paper a fire. But um, maybe even more so because um, um, that you're working with pigments, and if you start heating up pigments, who knows what chemicals may may um, appear? So, I have one question for you before I move on: um, Is my video focusing sharply on my drawing or on my hands? Because I um, I'm watch I'm, I'm watching the chat on my um, tablet. Um, but because I'm watching on my tablet, I can't really see um, the image of my video very well. So could you say, is the video quality enough on my um, on my drawing or should I try to um, change the focus a bit? Because um, I'm not really sure what it does when I'm doing a live. And I'm going to make some noise. I'm going to use my heat gun. So... Sorry for the noise. So the reason I'm um, also blow drying the background is because when you only do the front, there will be small droplets of water coming through the page on the, on the other side of the page, at least in a moleskin. But now I've got really buckled paper and that's not going to be a great surface to paint on because I'll get all these puddles. So what I do with moleskin is I have these, what do you call them, clamps, and I'm just going to, they're just going to be on there for a very short period of time. But I put them on there and what happens is that it, as the paper cools down, cools back down, cools off, cools off. Does it cool down or cool off? My camera is auto focusing. Oh no, I hate that. Hold on. I'm going to try and see if it, if, if it will focus on. <laughs> I can make it focus on. I hope it changed now. I hate it when that happens and if all's well um, the image you get to see should be better I don't know why it happens um, I've got three cameras that I filmed with for YouTube and all of them have started auto auto focus auto focusing focusing no, auto focusing <laughs> sorry um, but anyway uh, I really don't like it because when I look watch my own videos again, it makes me really, really crazy to just see it shift in and out of focus all the time. But if all's well, it should focus on my image right now. 
Is that correct? I really hope so. Right, so painting the, um, I'm going to call it butterfly, but of course it's a creature. I have no idea what kind of creature this is. Um, no idea whatsoever. I just, this is just my fence, my um, imagination going wild on paper. So I've got um, two references for this. Um, or oh, I painted this creature um, last Saturday. This one was a paint blob I worked into a creature, but and um, I think two, um, which was a lot of earth tones, beautiful. Oh, yeah, and um, but what I'm also wondering. Um, while I was painting this, my family, so, um, oh my God, what's happened to, something happened to my video quality or didn't it? Is it just my, um, hey Mikey, hello, sleepless in the USA. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope you didn't have to work yesterday or today for you after a late night yesterday. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. So, um. I just had a really weird image um, just now when things got uh, really crazy, but it may have been my internet connection. I hope it was, and that you're getting a good image. But anyway, so I was watching Lord of the Rings, the full trilogy. So what I was also, what I was thinking is that um, this area here could be like a helmet for this creature. So um, then I would like to paint this sort of um, a bluish iron-like colour. But then what do I do with the, with the wings? Because I really want it, the wings still to resemble, you know, that of an angle shades. Um, and then on the other hand, painting this one, this creature, still came out quite fierce, even though the colours are very subdued. You know, this is uh, uh, sort of like a purplish, pinkish, but very pale colour. And still it comes out pretty fierce. So maybe I should just leave it at that. Maybe I've been um, a little bit too much influenced by um, the two towers yesterday. <laughs> okay. So anyway. Um, all right, before I forget to mention, um, I got a message yesterday from somebody asking me what um, pencil I draw with. Um, so this is just HB Graphite, and this is um, a Graph 600 um, PG605 um, by Pentel, um, you know, and, and, and it's a, a technical pen, and it's really heavy, because um, I've got loads and loads and loads of um, lightweight um pencils but I don't like drawing with them I like to have a big weight in my hands it's it, it allows me more control okay so let's see let's mix the color um I've got my this is the palette I used for my creature yesterday so I've um I picked it up again um it's going to help me remember Oh, and I discovered, I've just, you know, I said, this is my ideal pal um, palette that I set up a little while ago. And um, uh, it, this one has changed from the one I filmed on YouTube, but I'm already running out of some colors. Um, and yesterday I found out that I actually, for the first time in years, have to order some new paints because I'm running out completely. So my PV19 I'm running out of, and that's one I'm going to be using today. I'm going to try and create a cool pink with PV19, mixing that too with uh, PV60, so in and thrown, in and thrown, in and thrown blue, and Titan buff. Um, so I'm actually going to have to put in some orders, and I'm also going to have to put in an order for the core cobalt blue. I'm not going to be using that now, but it's just a wonderful colour. Right, PV19. <laughs> It is lovely when, when you're sleepless that you can at least, you know, watch people live, isn't it? I think for me, the, the worst thing about not being able to sleep is, um, makes me feel so alone. 
You know, if I'm the only one in the world at that moment who's not asleep, <laughs> left behind by everyone who took off to their dreams. I don't have it a lot, fortunately, but uh, when it happens, I really hate it. Oh, you should see what's happening here. Look at that. Titan buff running over my PV-19. Okay. Um, oh my god, yeah, I am going to use this one. Wow, <laughs> okay. So, this is how you know pigment is strong. You mix it in a lot of other pigment and it's still dominant. There is a cat's hair here. Right, so going back in for more Titan Buff. I always use way too much paint, by the way. Should have tried, I should have started with Titan Buff and then dropped in just a little bit of PV19 because now I'm wasting a lot of paint. Hmm, oh well. You know, that's the thing. I also have a palette with very tiny wells. And I like to use it because it saves paint, because then I am not inclined to start using so much paint as I just did for this one. Isn't that crazy how how you can be influenced by um, your palette? <laughs> but it's true. It's like when you have a really big plate, you always load up more food on your plate than when you have a really small plate. OK, test paper. Yeah, that's nice and pale. Whoops, no, you're not going to be doing that. Okay. So, mm, still quite, it's not as pale as I thought it would be. So, Um, what was it with the head? Um, this piece was pink. I remember that. And then, so of course I'm not painting, you know, a picture perfect image of that butterfly. But I want to, I would like what I would like the end result to be is a little creature um, that reminds people of this angle shade, even though the angle shade is not really there anymore. If that makes any sense. Classic weight loss trick to start using small plates. <laughs> yeah, funny you said that. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. I saw um, a BBC documentary once about um, how people are influenced um, when you go to an all-you-can-eat restaurant. And maybe it's not like that. The things I hear about eating out in restaurants in the USA is different. Um, when friends of mine go to the USA on holiday, what they send me most is pictures of the enormous portions that, that are served in the USA compared to what's being served in, in Europe. Um, so maybe it's different over there. But the BBC did um, filmed a research once um, where they filmed how... Um, how all you can eat restaurants um, change the size of their plates so that you really feel that you can eat all you can eat, but in reality, you would be eating just as much as you would when you had been served, you know, when you had been served a meal. So that was kind of funny. There's other little things that we think we have free will 
and then it turns out we don't <laughs> or not as much as we thought we did okay so now um that's the first layer down um just a pink the very pale pink hey hello paint in hiding good morning <laughs> you're on a break again loving the background yep and I have used chromium oxide again in the background, which is why it's chromium oxide mixed with um, PG7, so a phthalo green. So it's very, very dull now. And um, but that's the exactly the exact right color for a, a background. Right. So um, letting this layer dry for now before I start. Um, um, putting in some accents and then I want to um, color in this creature and but yeah um, I'm just going to go for a little bit of paint that was left on my on my palette yesterday which is by the looks of it Monte Amiata Oh my god, my cat has been asleep on this palette. Oh no. There are all these hairs here. Ugh. Okay, right, going back in. I mixed some more because there was too much hair in there. It was my intention to only... Um, to stay here for just an hour because yesterday um, I spent about one and a half hour and I had no idea time was flying so fast but that's the thing when you're when you're painting and you're talking it's like hyper focus <laughs> trying to do two things at the same time what would we call this creature I was just thinking about that before I started the video. I was thinking of a name. And um, I made a few more of these creatures. Um, what I did is I chose a name that resembled or that had part of the Latin name in them. So this is the Angle Shades Butterfly and the Latin name is Phlogophora Meticulosa. So it's a meticulous, per meticulous type of insect. Although this is not really an insect anymore, is it? <laughs> so here is where I um, sort of define what the creature is versus the well helmet and cape it's wearing i still would like some steel blue in here still very much inspired by by the orcs and the urukai i saw yesterday and the fun thing is i went to a fantasy festival years ago and um, I think it was um, after Two Towers came out. And I was at the Fantasy Festival with a friend and we were over at a bookstore. At a bookstore. And, um, you know, there were lots of characters walking around there, um, like real beautiful characters. And we had already seen Ring Wraith that was so really beautifully done. I mean, Sometimes you see people dressed up as a ring wraith and then they're like, OK, really nice. But these guys were like, they sort of took your breath away when they passed. And then I was at the bookstore and all of a sudden I felt this weight over me and this shadow over me. And I thought there was a really, really big man, you know, trying to look over my shoulder at the books. And I was a bit, um, I felt he was getting a bit too close to me. So I looked around to sort of look him in the eye like back off a bit. And I got the scare of my life because the face I looked into was the face of the um, Urukai leader from the first um, movie, um, the one that killed Boromir. 
And um, the thing is, this was the actual or an actual replica of the real um, costume. So the guy was mega tall. He was mega, you know, wide shouldered. He was, he, and then there was this mask on there. And when he opened his mouth, there was actually something in that mouth that resembled the blackness and the darkness of this Urupai. So what happened is that even though you know it's not real, of course, in that first split second, my heart felt was about to explode because it was like a super scare. I hadn't expected it. And my friend who was with me at the time, she had seen it happen because she had already seen the guy coming and she was standing back a bit to see what was going to happen. And the guy chose me to scare me. So she had a laugh, <laughs> but also kind of a nervous laugh because it was it was really a very scary moment, <laughs> even though. Of course, it was not real at all. Yeah, the ceramic palette is really cute. I've got another ceramic palette that's that's also really cute. And we just agreed that it saves a lot of paint. <coughs> oh, no, we didn't agree on the paint part. We, we agreed on weight and plate, but, well, we assembled it. Sometimes you feel like you're the only person interested in watercolor that doesn't have a cat. <laughs> well, they don't go together really well, Mike. You know, the thing is, Mikey, I might not have a cat for much longer because it doesn't matter if I, you know, when I don't change this um, jar of water, when I don't refresh the water, my cat will drink from it. So also when I paint with cadmium. So I think both my cats are poisoned to death or not to death, but, you know, might not be very healthy for much longer. Let's make a story around him. Oh, that would be a good idea. What kind of story? Or do, you, do you have any ideas? Painting Heidi also doesn't have a cat. <laughs> well, cats, cats can be, cats are lovely. I have a dog and two cats and cats are lovely, but they can be, they can be a pain in the ass too. Can I say that on YouTube, pain in the ass or will I? So <laughs> YouTube asks you when you upload a video, it says, um, are you using any, you know, rough language in it? And then I think, well, I'm Dutch. Um, what's considered rough in the United States is peanuts here. So sometimes I really don't know what to say. Such, it's, we're so alike, our societies, and yet there's such differences every now and then. Okay, right. So going back to the, to the helmet-like thing. Oh, Ah, sorry. I just noticed that if I stick to my promise of painting, you know, only for an hour live, that it's almost time. And I just want to finish this thing. So now I'm deliberating whether I shall stay or that I shall indeed end my live after an hour because I'm going to finish this anyway so the part of me thinks like well might as well leave the camera on then but um, yeah the videos get very very long when I do that a story around this creature hmm In Labyrinth, there is this um, old man in, in, in the Labyrinth that has a bird as a hat. So it could be something like that. The butterfly is a hat, an angle shade. It's, it's um, bringing shade to this creature. Um, or maybe, maybe he killed it <laughs> and is wearing it as a trophy what the orcs would do, the Urukai. Or they would just eat them. <laughs> the cute swatching card, this one. Yeah, it is. Um, I want to make a video about this later, so it's actually already a sneak preview, unintentionally though. 
you know what i think i'm gonna do this um like well what is it a mantle uh a cloak i might do this one in steel blue let's just give it a try so steel blue um I think I'm just going for the PB60 with black. It's already here. Yeah. At least a thin layer. Hmm. I need it to be a little bit more black. Let's see how I like this. You know, if I, I just try things out like this, sometimes when I'm doing, you know, something I want to make prints of or commission or something, if I'm unsure about the colours I'll use, I'll simply photograph it with my tablet and I'll um, make digital colour, you know, a very rough colour attempts at first digitally to make sure I'm doing, to make sure it looks like the way I want it to look like. Aging myself by saying, but the flying nun, have you seen the flying nun? I only know one flying nun. It was from a Louis de Funer movie. I don't know if that's what you mean. <laughs> it's very refreshing to see you live. Hi, Sabia. Usually I miss them, but always follow you on YouTube. Thank you very much. Love the combination for the background. Good. It's, um, it's my very beloved not so beloved chromium oxide green with um a thale green okay so this is only roughly i'm mixing in a little bit more pb60 to um do some more shading accents. So just deepening a little bit of the shades in the wing to create more of a sense of, you know, a wavy, a wavy surface. Now I need to, if I want to pull it off in one go, needed to change my paper for that. And I'll have to add the shading in there later. Um, right. Let's look back at the... Mm. Okay. 
So I'm going to use Permanent Brown again by Daniel Smith. It's my replacement for Venetian and English Red. But you know, I'm beginning to like the, the Chromium Oxide Green. So I was thinking yesterday that maybe if I give the English and Venetian Red a chance, <laughs> I might learn to love it. <laughs> Although I don't think so. <laughs> you were disappointed in Chromium Oxide, yeah. It definitely is a mixing colour. I will never, ever love the colour for itself, but... Uh... Are you? Oh, thank you very much. That's really nice to hear. <laughs> I'll do my best to keep you entertained then. <laughs> right. Um... What time is it's quite five minutes past the time I wanted to film, so let's see. Mm -hmm. Um I want to I can't stop painting, I have to keep going. <laughs> This nose is a bit obscene, isn't it? But on the other hand, I've been studying insects lately, the insects in my garden, and um, there really are a lot of creatures that have a really weird nose. Um, I'm especially fond of weevils because weevils have a nose that's so embarrassing sometimes. It's like, but probably weevils think that they have really pretty noses, but uh, they're really clumsy too. I should use a bigger brush for this. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting a little bit more definition of um, of this creature. So we're getting somewhere, aren't we? Finally, it takes a while with all these layers, but it's getting somewhere. So I'm going to give it nine more minutes. So it won't be finished um, today, um, but I just don't want to wear my viewers out. Um, so now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to draw in with very quick lines. Oops. That's with very thin brushes. Do you have that too sometimes? That your brush just escapes you?
going back in with light strokes to um, to add another element that may be reminiscent of this um, Engel Shades moth to anyone watching, looking at it. You collected Cobalt PG-52. You're like M. Graham, Cobalt Teal. You know, M. Graham is so hard to get. Moonglow. Oh, yeah, Moonglow is lovely. I think I have it right here, don't I? I think so. Yes, this is a Moonglow. I love it very much, and I have to say, and that's really weird, I hardly use it. Is one of those colours that's just awesome to have, and when you when you look at it first, it's like wow. Um, but for me, in my work, I found I rarely use it. As much as I like it, it's I don't know what it is. Um, Cobalt turquoise, that's um, cobalt teal, cobalt turquoise. I love that colour. It's a trendy colour at the moment, especially, you know, the hand lettering and everything, but it's also a fab colour for mixes. It's one of my favourites. Maybe it's my favourite colour. But then on the other hand, I have to say, you know, I really don't like the cobalt green. And yet... I'm really chuffed about this background. <laughs> because had I just used a perylene green, it would have looked different. And the cobalt green together with the thalo just, you know, makes it look, I don't know, more alive, more realistic. Okay, I'm getting somewhere. Um, let's see what I did here. Okay, oh, that's a weird mix I did. Hmm, wanted to do something with the antenna as well to give it a little bit of colour and I want to mix this sort of purplish colour with a tad of this. <laughs> what? This is not even a colour. This is muddy, 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 muddy. Oh, hold on. There is something else I forgot to do. Um, yep. The eyes. Oh, no. Hold on. Mm, I've got to think about this first before I do anything. Um, I wanted to do the eyes of the moth, but I want now I have to be really careful because when I make when I color the moth's eyes like I did here, so pretty much like an owl's eyes, then I'm going to make this much more of a live creature. So I'm changing um, the character of this entire image if I do that. Um, so um, what I could do is make them steel blue and create the suggestion of relief so that the eyes are not really alive but they're relief like in Roman statues where the irises were always 
were always holes in the or little dents in the in the eyeballs. Mm, I need to think about this for a bit. Um, in the meantime. So that's not the colour I really want it to be in the end, but um, let's see what I'm going to do with this. I might just, yeah. So if I want to create the illusion of a helmet then then I can paint all the way around the head like this and I have to not forget to paint a little shadow on the face later so that we all know that this um, butterfly head is standing on this this creature's head because um, it's casting a shadow. So okay, then it's just make sure it's clear. This is the neck, and that the dark area in the neck does not belong with the helmet, but is you know the shadow of the of the face cobalt teal a cobalt teal is wonderful wonderful absolutely right so guys, I'm going to stop this um, live session because it's already an hour and a quarter. Um, I think I will be back because I quite enjoy start, starting my day like this and having a chat with you guys um, and, you know, um, showing some work. It's kind of fun to do. So, um, but I am going to finish this right now and I will, um, I hope I remember to upload a video, a photo of this. Um, if you want to be um, invited to do more, uh, to watch more lives, then you can subscribe to my channel if you're not really subscribed. And then um, I will try to post a notification of my going online about half an hour in advance so that you know I will be there and you won't miss it. Um, and I, I think I'll leave the video up for you to um, look at it later if you want to, if you've missed certain parts. So... Um, well, thank you very much for watching and I hope you're going to have a really lovely day over here. It's raining very hard again. The doves are sitting outside. They are begging me to come out to feed them again. So I'm going to just, you know, um, be brave and um, dive through the rain and feed my doves. Um, I think there are about 50 in the garden right now. And um, well, going to make sure they have a really good day and the rest of the day is going to be stormy so that's going to be a wonderful excuse to sit inside all day long and um you know play with um this finish my painting and hopefully show you the result um of this um in my i will do it in my posts i won't make a video about that but i will um do a post on my channel so you know so looking forward to seeing you guys again um maybe tomorrow who knows <laughs> bye bye have a very good day